What's going on, everybody? It's uh, Spaz Kid with the Sunday Tutorials. I apologize for all these previous Sundays, um, because I haven't been uploading, obviously. And I haven't been making stuff, obviously, but that's mainly because I've been incredibly busy on a really big project that just recently was finished. So now I'm going to be uploading more frequently. I'm going to try and get something out at least every month, maybe, maybe two things. It depends how long it is. I, I really plan on working on a big project because I usually like to have one big project and a bunch of little shit in between. That's kind of, that was kind of like the game plan, the idea. And I'm getting, I'm, I think I'm going to get Adobe After Effects because, let's fucking face it, it's incredible. Uh, you can do a lot of shit with After Effects and you can make your animations look pretty fucking awesome. And uh, from what I've seen, I really, really want to get into After Effects and I also want to get into a little bit of 3D. Because, I mean, not just because my name is fucking, has 3D in it. That's just some gay gimmick thing I've been doing forever. But it's because 3D um, is really cool. And if I had 3D with 2D, that would, I don't know. This is something I want to do in the future. But for now, we're going to do Sunday tutorials. I'm completely getting off topic. Basically, I kind of feel like my last tutorial, I didn't teach shit. I felt like I was just kind of rambling on and spouting nonsense, and if you followed any of that, I'm thankful, but it was very hard to understand, so I'm going to explain it a little bit better um, in a easier way. But before I start anything, I want to tell you guys that the whole, people ask how to import and export audio, Oni's done tutorials, he's done like two, and he, he tells you how to export audio and how to do all that shit. If you want to learn how to do like the audio exporting and at what quality it should be set at and what you should set stuff at then go talk to Oni because he's already done I mean go fucking talk to Oni I mean look at his video you don't really need to converse to get an idea so basically I'm gonna be teaching you guys today how to lip sync because I do it a different way Oni does well for the most part Oni still does it sort of the same way but for to get you don't I'm not talking about swapping symbols this is gonna be frame by frame mouths, but there's a certain way I do it, and it's pretty easy if you can understand easing, which is something I'm going to teach you guys today. Now, I taught you guys how to ease with tweens, but tween easing is not necessarily the best thing. It's more nicer to tween frame by frame wise. Now, I'm going to make uh, uh, just, I'm going to make a new layer to explain what I mean. So, I have a ball here, and you notice I have one frame. And then, okay, before I even begin this, I'm going to answer another question. I apologize, but I just want to get a few things out there. A lot of people ask, what the hell do I mean by animating uh, in two frames? This would be animating in one frame, and this would be animating in two frames. Normally when I do in-between poses, or I'm just like, you know, talking, or there's just simple animation going on, I work in two frames, which is this. I never work in one, because I feel one is incredibly fast. And I've, even though the video uh, export thing I'm using is complete garbage, it, it really I really think that working in two for mouths and most everything gives it a more fluent, realistic feel, which is why I work in two. So, anyways, we're gonna I'm gonna draw a ball and show you guys what I mean by ease. So you notice the ball right here is just slightly done. So I'm gonna insert I'm gonna press F7 and insert another frame, and then I'm gonna move the ball only slightly, just uh, just a little bit. And then I'm going to insert another frame, same amount, and I'm going to sort of make the ball, like, expand a little bit. Like, you know, it's, uh, it's going a little faster. And now I'm going to make the ball over here. And then I'm going to make the ball come back over here. And then it's going to slow down again. And then slow down. Wait a let me apologize, let me get this right again. Like that. Like that. That. So basically I just showed you guys, this is easy. This is what I do. It's really easy, and um, it's really just a matter basically of stretching and skewing something. So, basically what easing is, is it's... Um, sort of like a slowdown, like you start out quick and then you come to a halt, but that in-between animation is the halt, and that would be the easing. So, let me give you an example. As I've drawn this, you see I start out, and there's a slight movement, then there's a large movement, then it slows down again. 
that would be easing. Similar to how, I'm going to give you another example. I could give you the same exact, the same effect with a tween, but it won't look as good because, as you know, tweens don't really change position. So it's the same general idea. All right, so I drew two examples. I made one frame by frame, which is at the top, and one is tweened. So as I play it, you can see the difference. When you're allowed to draw frame by frame easing, it gives you a bigger advantage to draw, you know, quicker than you normally could tweening. This is the same amount, this is the same length, only you can see that the tween, the frame by frame one just looks a lot better. I hope I explain that a little bit better because mainly in animation, easing is possibly one of the most important things. Frame by frame easing is just, it's a, it's the same as tweening, only you have a more you're, you're able to do more with it. So let me give you another example. Let me draw... Um, because not everything you draw is going to look like a fucking a circle, okay? Sometimes you might draw things that don't look like circles. Maybe, for instance, a hand. I mean, how much fucking hands have I drawn as an example? And I apologize for my limitations at the moment. But I'm just kind of trying to draw shit really quickly. So, and hands are pretty the way I do, they're easy. So I'm gonna zoom in 150 and I'm gonna draw fucking a hand. So here's a hand and I want the hand to go to here. Or Don't ask about the fingers, they were put through a meat grinder. Okay, so we have the hands um, so now I'm going to show you easing with, like, you know, bottle, bodies. It's, it's basically the same thing. Like, uh, you know, you have a slowdown. Notice I put a little slowdown on it. And, uh, then I'm going to make a little speed up. This could be qualified as a skeleton because this is terribly horrible looking and uh, but this time I'm gonna do something completely different I'm gonna blow your fucking mind I'm gonna do you see that you see that? That is a, that's what I call a bounce effect. And in animating, bounce effects are incredibly important for really, really thick and really hard movements. Basically, it, you, when you're doing something really, really hard, like if somebody's punching or somebody's kicking or there's a long thrusted throw or there's any motion that is really violent or quick, you would need a bounce back effect. When you throw your hand out in real life, your hand doesn't automatically stop. You, it's not conjoined. You, you, have, you always have a bounce back effect. I mean, you can try it all you want. You can't automatically stop your hand in a mid throw completely still with no sort of jol jolt back movement. And that applies to animation too. When somebody throws their hand, there's always a jolt back movement. All right, so now that I taught you guys how to ease and how to do bounce effects, now I'm going to teach you guys how to animate in between because you guys are probably wondering wait what the fuck how did you get all that in between stuff so I made two examples and I, I mean I already had these examples here I'm just explaining what their purpose is now there's always a start there's always a middle and there's always an end when animating before you even start an animation or a storyboard you wanna create for every single movement for every single motion there is pictures in between like there's always the main point and that's basically all it is really see there's a start middle and end this is obviously you know first glance is a hiss is a hand closing and creating a fist now that I have all this drawn out ugh, now that I can't fucking talk now that I have all this drawn out I'm gonna animate in between which is normally what I do I draw the pictures and then I animate in between this is what most people do when they animate they don't just fucking go along as they go and just you know freeball it they actually have something 
And, I mean, this won't be a final thing. This is basically like a skeleton because this is pretty roughly done. Um, so now I'm going to animate in between and show you guys what I mean. So, like I said, there's going to be a... a I'm going to push a little movement back. So I'm going to do a slight ease back. I could even, like, sort of close the, the hand, the fingers. It's not necessarily important. Again, it uh, looks terrible, I know, but I'm just trying to give an example out there. All right, so I drew the example, and it is a hand closing. There's a lot of frames in here, and it, there might even be too much, but this is just for an example of what I'm talking about. So I'm going to take away that. I'm going to slow it down. I'm going to make it a little quicker, so I'm going to remove some frames. Could even draw this hand back a little bit. Could honestly take this out. Just trying to get a more realistic look. Alright, so there we go. Now, all these things that I taught you guys just recently all applies to this one little animation. There's an ease, and there's a bounce effect. Because he's doing it kind of quickly, and if you close your hand really fast, like you can even do, you can even look at this animation and probably perform it yourself and you'll see that even when you do it, your hand always has a bounce back effect. Most, and it's um, as simple as that. That's all really animation comes down to. Uh, it didn't really need to be 30 minutes like I fucking forced myself to do. So there you go. Now I'm going to teach you guys how to lip sync. And lip syncing is a little more difficult and I'm going to have to start a new slate. So one sec. Alright, so now that we talked about easing and bounce effects, it's time to apply it to lip syncing because you do apply all these forms of animation to lip syncing. As strange as that may sound, it's very important. So I'm going to go ahead and just draw the main mouths for what a fucking Sailor Moon is saying. So I'm going to... Butterfly, butterfly. So as you can hear, it's sort of like an ah. So, ah, and there's a closed mouth. Still closed. I think I could move it out a little more. And now the mouth is open yet again. And it's closed again. There. So you you get the basic idea. Like it's um I've drawn all the mouths, and what I'm gonna do exactly how we did the last time is after since I've done all of them, I'm just gonna animate in between. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna animate all these things in between. So since it's come to here, I'm going to animate that. So I'm going to use my onion skinning, and I'm just going to make this mouth medium-sized. And I'm going to sort of bring this up a little bit to give more, and I'm going to push it out more because you can see it sort of goes in like this. So I'm going to make it come up and down a little bit. And there's a lot of emphasis on the fun, so I'm going to make the mouth sort of stretched out a little bit. And it's coming up again. Medium size. The mouth will come up again, close.
This is pretty pin primitive animation you might have noticed. This is because this is a fairly old file and I'm actually going back through and re-skeletoning some of the shit. And this is also an upcoming animation if no, none of you knew. So it's as simple as that. I mean, you can color in the mouths, you can make it look good, and that's really all it is to lip syncing. That's all I do. I mean, I, I'm not fucking going all out of my way to make it look incredibly good, but I keep all this stuff in mind when I do stuff. Really, in animating, what you should take your most time in is drawing the still pictures of what you're going to be working in between, because in the long run, nobody's really going to be seeing the in-between shit you do. So even if you got lazy with the anatomy and it wasn't fucking Disney precise nonsense, and like, let's say, you know, fuck it, you just sort of like made something crazy and out of the blue, then, you know, there you go. Look here, I'm going to go back an example, uh, somewhere here, no, no, it's more back. Here we go. I just recently did this over again. So I'm going to play it so you guys can have an example of what I did. I still got to change this head because it looks kind of weird, but... That's basically all I got. I mean, there's not much else I can tell you. I guess the next tutorial, I'm going to teach you guys how I do hair. Because I do hair a certain way uh, when I make body movement. And it's been working for the longest time. And I'll see you guys later.